On today's Church TechCast Screencast show, let's say you want to use the stage display with a totally different layout for the pastor and the band. How do you do that? Stay tuned. Hi everyone and welcome again to the ChurchTechCast.com screencast show. This is the show where every week I screencast a different tutorial on how to use software that's particular to the church or using software in a way that is particularly helpful to the church. Normally I do ProPresenter 5, but if I run out of ideas, I might just shift to some of the other software that's available, like uh, Planning Center Online, um, some of Adobe's products, etc. So this week we're talking about ProPresenter 5. Surprise, surprise, since it's one of my favorite topics. My name is Paul Allen Clifford, and I'm your host. And if you have any questions, uh, any desire to learn about something that I haven't covered, by all means, leave a comment below the video, whether you're watching it on YouTube or TrinityDigitalMedia.com. And um, if you're not, uh, head over to TrinityDigitalMedia.com slash contact. If you have a question, just want to fire it off on Twitter. I did literally write the book on Twitter for churches. So you can go to Twitter, Paul Allen Cliff, P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N, C-L-I-F, and I am more than happy to interact with you there. Or you can drop me a line, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com. So, let's say that uh, your pastor says, you know, it's great that you've got this stage display for the band. Is there any way I could see my notes? And I really don't just want to see the text. I'd love to see any pictures that I have, you know, that kind of thing. Well, uh, what do you do? Uh, you, the band tells you that the backgrounds are too busy and they distract them from the lyrics, so you have those disabled. Do you need to go in, like, in between the last song and the message and tweak all that? No, you don't. So let's talk about exactly how I would go about uh, doing just that. So here we are over in ProPresenter 5 and you'll notice, uh, again this isn't full screen since I'm screencasting this, I'm trying to save some bandwidth. We're uh, streaming this live on churchtechcast.com which I do every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific over there and so you'll see right now, because ProPresenter normally does a lot of crunching and it takes a lot to also live stream, I've got this stopped, but just to show you, that is a moving background. So if I was going to uh, show the stage display, I've also got that set up for this same monitor, so we'll just... Uh, pop that open and you'll see that I've got it's very busy but let's for this case I put everything possible on this stage display and you're not seeing all of it it continues on past this right hand side but I've got the current slide I've got the next slide I've got current slide notes next slide notes I've got a video countdown up here I've got a clock I've got uh, other countdowns below that you can't see. I've even got a stage message. A lot of that stuff which your pastor quite frankly doesn't need and would find very distracting even if he or she just wanted the text here. So how do we solve this problem? I mean, you know, wouldn't it be great if you could show the whole shebang? Well, actually you can. So First off, what you need to do is go click on the ProPresenter menu. Again, I'm on a Mac. It might be slightly different on a PC. 
and go to preferences or command comma it's probably control comma on the PC and oops let's actually bring this up here where you can see most of it so you'll notice that I've got this configure stage display menu here I don't know why this is showing exactly the way that it is I expect it's actually showing like this instead of with the output over here but doesn't matter makes it easier for me so we'll do this so we've got the stage display right here so I'm going to click configure stage display now when I do that I get a representation of the stage display I also get stage display options well you'll notice that I have two options up here I've got the music option which is the one you've already seen represented right here but I've also got another option and let me show you how I created that so first off I'm gonna uh, add a new option and that's gonna be just the kind of the default set now what I did in this case is I started unselecting all this stuff that I don't need for the pastor because the pastor only wants to know in this case what's currently up on the screen so I'm just gonna unselect everything and now I've got this one window right here but it's still not exactly what we want because the pastor wants to see it as it is on the main screen so I'm gonna click text only so when I uncheck text only it gives me the current slide but it's not exactly showing me what I want either so I'm gonna click on this real quick to get rid of this this X in the upper left hand corner oops here instead let me move that off to the side on my other monitor and so we're here and what I can do is I can actually resize this bad boy so that's exactly what I'm gonna do going to resize this uh, let me actually resize it so it fits and pull that down okay so there we are on this so I have kind of that is this default, which you'll notice is actually identical to this pastor one. It's not resized exactly the same, but similar. So what that's doing is it's not showing the background, but it is showing the foreground text. Okay, now let's enable the, um, let's first actually go to this loop here. Do, do, do. Okay, there we go. And I can either enable stage display here, or I've got that uh, the stage display icon. Oh, nope. Right. Window. Okay, so I could do Command 2 to do that. And you'll notice here, this is where the magic is that I have those three options. So if it's the beginning of the service and I have the music option, I'm gonna hit Command 2. So I've got this music option up. Now, again, I, I would have more than one monitor, but then I can go to Output Window could go to stage display right here and go to pastor and then this is what we would see so you see you're not seeing the whole thing of course as I've said a couple of times but you see how that we get pictures and we get something much closer to what's on the main screen now the background if you were using a moving background or something like that wouldn't show up but foreground pictures would 
So this can be very helpful to the pastor. Now, believe it or not, that's not the only way to do it. There is a hardware solution as well. So what you could do is you could actually run two monitors up wherever your stage display monitor is, have another monitor which is an exact duplicate of what's going on on the screen behind you. So you use a distribution amplifier. My friends over at Kramer, who I don't work for, but they, I did win a contest and so I really like them, um, make a distribution amplifier that would be perfect for this, which is a lot of people call them splitters, but you don't want a splitter. You want a distribution amplifier, or DA, which amplifies and then splits so that you get just as strong a signal. So there you go. You have uh, two ways to do this. You can either do this in software by switching over between the stage displays, you know, either the music stage display or the pastor stage display. And by the way, you can make several of these. So if you have more than one teaching pastor and one of them likes it one way and another likes it another way, or you have more than one worship leader and one likes it one way and another likes it another way, you can switch between these. And there's no reason why you can't do that in service. And especially, you shouldn't have a problem with doing this live you know, between clicks on your interface. So if there's a musical interface or something, uh, interlude or something like that, you should be able to swap this over with no uh, indication on your main screen. But you might, just to be sure, swap it over during, the, during a, a prayer time. A lot of times there's a prayer in between worship and the pastor speaking, at least in my church. So that's when I would tend to do it just to be extra safe. So you do that and then the pastor gets what he wants and the worship leader gets what he or she wants. Um, and in that way, you can make them both happy or you could go with the hardware solution where you have two monitors and you say, pastor, you look at this one and band, you look at this one and that solves your problem too. Either way is a perfectly legitimate way to do it and it's very helpful to your church. If you found this uh, screencast helpful, then I suggest that you subscribe to it. It's absolutely free and you'll get uh, information about new videos as they're released. You can do that here, uh, whether it's on YouTube or if you're on my site, trinitydigitalmedia.com slash subscribe, you can subscribe for free to the videos or the audio if you listen to any of the other shows. I don't make this particular one available in audio because the screencast, quite frankly, doesn't make any sense in audio format. The best way you can help the show is to share it with others. So feel free to do that. Tell them to go to trinitydigitalmedia.com and whichever of the shows they like, then be very, uh, it would be very helpful if you could uh, share those and they can subscribe to those as well. If you'd like to leave a review, you can do that in Stitcher or iTunes Whatever you use to subscribe to this show, that's perfectly fine. Leave comments below the videos or on the blog post for the individual ones, etc. And that helps me in uh, doing what I'm doing, which is going out and changing eternity. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.